Sir? It's my privilege to request our chief guest this morning, Professor Ruth DeFries, to deliver the convocation address. Good morning. Thank you for the kind invitation and the wonderful time here at SEPT in these few days. Respected board members, president, deans, faculty, graduates, families, friends, it is an honor to have the opportunity to be with you on this very special day. The thrill of a convocation, and I've been to many, never wanes to the parents and families. As a parent myself, I know the exhilaration of witnessing this milestone after many years of helping our children learn and grow. To the graduates, I know the elation of making it through a rigorous course of study combined with the nervous anticipation of what lies ahead. The invitation to address you today is a particular privilege for me, as I consider this country my second home. From my first visit in 1980, before many of the graduates were born, until today, India has opened a window for me to witness the profound changes sweeping this country and the world as a whole. It's hard to decide which of the many changes are the most consequential. Towns that have mushroomed into cities, shopping malls, an open economy, mobiles, satellite TV dishes, washing machines, multi-lane highways, the elimination of leprosy and other diseases, the reduction of poverty, growth in the number of people from less than 700 million to almost 1.4 billion, increasing numbers of people living in cities, these are only a few of the massive, massive changes. But many of the features of this fascinating country have endured since my first visit and will likely endure into the distant future. Incredible ingenuity and life-saving knowledge based on ancient experience accumulated over many millennia. How to survive in a precarious world where the monsoon can unleash a flurry of floods or a drought can send people into desperation. Brilliant ways to store water in the desert, houses that stay cool in the summer and warm in the winter with no source of energy except the sun, a rich tapestry of mingling cultures and beliefs. Traditions run deep. The deep-seated roots of tradition flower into a spellbinding melange of languages, cuisines, ideas, and worldviews. As a land that has been at the crossroads of traders and invaders from the north and west, and has extended its influence far beyond its borders over many millennia, the enduring traits are diversity, adaptability, and continual evolution. Today, the world is at one of the most pivotal crossroads in its evolution. The graduates here today will help decide which way to go. For Many, year, many centuries up into the last, nearly everyone was a farmer and the economy was shaped by an agrarian society. In my home country, the massive shift from farmers eking a living on a small bit of land was the norm until the boom of industrialization of the early 20th century. In India, largely still agrarian, the same shift is swiftly occurring, but taking place in a different time of rapid communication, exchanges of ideas, technologies that automate tasks that used to be done by backbreaking hard labor. More infrastructure will be built in the coming decades than in all of the many millennia that came before. Urban centers are expanding by the day, so much that I can't recognize places between one visit and the next. Much more infrastructure and expansion of cities will occur over the next few decades. Even in my village in Madhya Pradesh, within the span of a few short years, dhabas, pakka houses, paved roads have mushroomed beyond recognition. How these rapid changes will play out and whether they will bring security to people's lives or make them more vulnerable is yet to be seen. 
for the planners and the architects and the engineers. The decisions you make today will shape the future for how people live and how cities function in an urbanizing economy. There is no map, there is no manual to guide us about the best decisions and the path that will make people's lives healthier, happier, and more secure. And there certainly is no guidebook to chart a path to meld ancient roots with modern conveniences and aspirations. To me, the largest looming question is which path forward can combine the wisdom of the past with the creativity and ingenuity of the present? Is there a role for traditional designs that kept houses cool in the sweltering heat? Or would everyone be better off to forget about the old in favor of an easier alternative? Just put an air conditioner in every room. Should the values that stored food and water for hard times be overrun by assumptions that those hard times are a relic of the past? Are traditional ways merely romantic notions and anachronisms in modern times? There is no right or wrong answer to the question of whether or how to meld rich ancient cultures with modern conveniences. It's difficult to foresee the practical benefits of ancient knowledge amidst a mind-boggling array of options for planning the future, but those benefits may become more apparent in an uncertain future. Multi-story concrete buildings or natural materials, traditional cereals in the diet, such as the wonderful bajra here in Gujarat, or the more modern alternative of rice. One of the many perspectives I have learned to appreciate from my second home is that there can be many correct answers to the same question. No one personified that perspective more than my beloved mother-in-law. She was not particularly well-educated. Her family allowed her to study only until fifth standard. She married very young. She had many children, and she spent much of her life in the kitchen making rotis. Her horizon could not have spanned very far. But she was the smartest, most insightful person I have ever known. She came from a generation deeply seated in age-old traditions. But she embraced the modern world when it served her purpose and shunted it aside when it didn't. She experimented and figured out how to make gajar halva in a microwave, and after many trials, learned how to make, figured out how to make paratas on an electric stove, even though she couldn't quite figure out where the heat actually came from. But her skill with melding the old and the new went far beyond kitchen conveniences. She ardently supported the right to education for girls in the family. She let go of social stigmas and traditional expectations around who should marry whom. She emanated wisdom and good sense. At the same time, she displayed the cherished traditional values of patience, generosity, respect, and putting others above self. Without much formal education or exposure to the big world, she had no preconceived notions about what was good or bad, right or wrong. She made her decisions based on what she thought would work best not what anyone else told her she should think. I learned more from my mother-in-law than from any class, any professor, or any book. Trust yourself, do what you think is right, keep rooted in traditions that bring good to our community and the world at large, experiment and embrace modern technologies, but keep them only if they prove beneficial. My mother-in-law died far too early and well before her time, a victim, like so many others, of breathing hazardous smoke from years of chicken, cooking over charcoal. What she left was a memory and reminder that we serve our families and communities best when we keep an open mind and meld the modern and the traditional. The professions that you are about to enter will guide how the old and modern coexist. The decisions you make as you plan and design how people will live will set the future for an urbanizing India. As every day the world gets harder to comprehend and forces seem to push in opposite and contrary directions, you will only have your instincts and good sense to guide your decisions. 
The most pressing questions have no clear answers in these pivotal times. As more people live in cities, how will humanity feed itself, provide water, coexist peacefully in close quarters, and survive as the future climate is not like the past? In our interconnected urban world, can people live healthy lives with clean air and habitable spaces? There is no prefabricated model for a sustainable path forward. No one has a blueprint or a certain answer. Each country, each community needs to chart its own path based on its own aspirations. With creative minds and a view towards learning from the long acquired experience while looking to the future, you are designing and shaping that untrodden path. May you have as much poise as my dear mother-in-law, who gracefully navigated through the changing times that she witnessed in her too short life. To all of the graduates, congratulations. Padaiho. May you and your families find peace, happiness, and health as you go forward. Thank you.